What's up guys, Chinzo here. So I've been living in my travel trailer for just over a month now, and I gotta say it's been pretty amazing so far. For the past couple of years I've been traveling for work, living out of overpriced Airbnbs, sketchy hotels, and underwhelming apartments. This summer I decided to invest in a travel trailer, and I spent two months traveling Texas, making memories with my wife and dogs. It was one hell of an adventure, and honestly, it was probably the best summer of my life. But it wasn't without a few setbacks. After a ton of ups and a few downs, I decided to take on the full-time RV life. And here's how it's going so far. So I'll give you my take on my first month living in an RV resort, then I'll take a step back and I'll share with you my approach to getting into RVing and what I did to prepare for it. So we're at Lakeview RV Resort in Houston, and we're about five miles south of the Texas Medical Center, where I'm currently working at. And that brings me to the first thing that I enjoy about RV living and what actually drew me to it in the first place, and that's location and cost. Lakeview is part of a chain of luxury RV resorts in Houston and costs about 700 bucks a month plus electric. For that price, I get not only a good location, but also several amenities that make my stay here a lot easier. Like a 24 hour laundromat, a fitness center with a pool table, a sweet pool with a hot tub, multiple outdoor kitchens, and a lake stocked with bass and some monster catfish. Overall, it's a really great resort and I'll do a more comprehensive review on it before I leave because I think it's probably the best place I could have chosen for my first long-term RV resort experience. All right, so I've already told you about the resort, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about my campsite. So I picked my site off a map and I picked it based on proximity to the main office. And also this particular site has a pretty nice sight line for, um, for backing in. The only issue was this particular site has absolutely no shade and it's next to a noisy freeway, which would probably make it an undesirable site for most people, but that actually kind of helped me dial in my preference in a long-term site. Because it seems less desirable, I've had pretty much no neighbors the entire time I've been here, and it actually is a huge benefit being super close to the main office. I really do like living so close to the main office. Every morning I just grab my board, skate over, grab some coffee. The hard part is not spilling any on the way back. So once I got parked, I had a really easy time adjusting to living in this trailer. And this was also the first time I had the entire place all to myself. I came to find out this 27 foot box is plenty of space for me and all of my stuff. And I actually find comfort in the simplicity and minimalism of a smaller living space. All right, so it's midnight right now and I'm kind of a night owl because I work night shift. So I thought I'd knock out a couple of projects that I've been meaning to do. First of which is going to be laying down this sticky mat inside all of my drawers. The second project is applying these 3M command hooks to make a custom fishing pole holder. Um, right now my poor little fishing pole is just hanging out there with uh, no real home. I think I'm going to find a place to make a, a custom fishing rack. So let's jump into that real quick. Before embarking on this adventure, I thought there would definitely be some compromise. Surely there would be something that I just couldn't do from a trailer. But I was pleasantly surprised to realize that I didn't have to sacrifice much other than just some square footage, and I could still have pretty much all of the luxuries of living in a conventional house. I've got plenty of cooking and prep space. I've got an area dedicated solely to video editing and working from my laptop. When I want to wind down, I've got cable TV, and I can even enjoy some video games. And if I ever feel cooped up, I'm only footsteps away from the lake where I can enjoy some fresh air and plenty of outdoor activities without ever even leaving the resort. So the transition into a travel trailer was fairly smooth, but it wasn't without its quirks. 
For example, I still don't know where the best place is to store my mountain bike, so I usually just move it to a different area every few days. I think I like it here best because it's the first thing I see when I walk into the trailer. So right here, as soon as I walk in, I've got my board, I've got my bike, I've got my fishing pole. It's just uh, kind of nice to walk in and be welcomed by all of your favorite things. There's also the issue of sound recording. Needless to say, a travel trailer is not the ideal place to record and edit voiceovers, and it took me a little while to get my recording space just right. Here's a look at what I've got to do to turn my kitchen into a recording studio for every voiceover, including this one. It's a bit of extra prep work, but it's now part of my workflow, and at least I know I can get a consistent quality of sound for all of my videos. So the real legwork for this adventure started about a year ago. I spent a few months researching pretty much every trailer design and layout imaginable to determine what would be the best fit for me and my family. I'd already own a half ton truck, so I'd be working within the size, weight, and towing parameters of my truck's capabilities. In a perfect world, I'd be shopping for a truck and a trailer at the same time, and that would open me up to more options on larger trailers, but I just bought a new truck a year prior, and I really wasn't motivated to jump back into truck shopping, especially in this insane auto market. I picked up a 2018 Salem 27 D Bud. It's 29 and a half feet long overall, and it's just over 6,000 pounds dry. And I know what you're probably thinking, that's a lot of trailer for a half ton truck, and you wouldn't be completely wrong about that. I know this truck and trailer combo falls into that controversial gray zone of towing, and I'm completely aware of that. But for now I'll just say that I'm able to stay within all of my towing parameters, although it does require a strict loading strategy, and in my opinion it does limit where I'm able to travel safely. But I'll get more into specifics on that subject later in the video. With the trailer picked out, I needed a hitch, and I went with the Blue Ox Track Pro. This weight distribution hitch does a great job of mitigating sag, but I also installed some airbags just to be able to tweak and fine tune the ride height on the rear end. Along with my wife and dogs, we hit the road and explored several campgrounds in southeast and central Texas. We had a blast, made a ton of memories, and I took the opportunity to work out all of the newbie kinks. I got super familiar with the basics like launching, leveling, managing my hookups, and so on. All right, now for the fun part. I'm gonna get electric, water, and sewer hooked up. Let's do it. Hey! Hey! I'm moving sites because I reserved for four days, two days at this site, two days at the next because of availability. And uh, the good thing is this gives me the opportunity to go ahead and practice something that uh, I definitely need to practice on and that's backing my trailer into the spot. As you can tell, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I'm sweating already just thinking about it, but it's good practice. So come along and see how awkward I can be. So let me know when I should start uh, backing it up. I think you're right here. Good, good, good. Good? Get back up a little. You don't have to keep turning left back up. Even out and back up. I'm too, I'm too far that way. I'm going to go further ahead. Okay. That's what yeah, it looks like to me. You can restart it. Yeah, I don't want to have to cut it too sharp. Hey! Hey! The way okay. that you're going though is a little bit on an ankle. Okay, I'm gonna try to know. straighten it. Hey! <laughs> Think that looks pretty damn good. Good job, baby. <laughs> Thanks. The best spotter right there. What's up? So before I close out this video, I do want to mention that RV living isn't always easy or glamorous. It definitely does come with its fair share of uh, challenges and adversities. So for me, I was really fortunate to have that entire summer to be able to step away from work and step away from YouTube and filming and um, just focus solely on just RVing and really get to learn the ins and outs of this lifestyle and uh, to also kind of diagnose all of those little repairs and those little maintenance projects um, that you kind of discover along the way. I was able to like really, really dig into all of that. But fortunately, I haven't really ran into anything that's been overwhelming or anything that I really couldn't handle, you know? I was also lucky enough to have my first blowout on my second trip ever. Um, I was only 10 minutes away from my destination, heard a big pop, um, knew exactly what it was right when it happened. And uh, yeah, blowouts definitely suck. I still got to my destination just a few hours later. Um, like I said, it wasn't a pleasant 
experience, but you know, it comes along with the territory. These kind of things happen. Um, but the good thing is I got that bad experience kind of out of the way early. Not that it'll be my last one, but you know, when you've gone through that sort of thing, it gets easier the next time. You know what I'm saying? But anywho, that's the biggest crisis I've had so far. And um, as for the future, I'm kind of just hoping for the best. You know, I haven't ran into anything that I really couldn't handle. But that should do it for this one, guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video because it's running kind of long. But if you did make it to this point in the video, I would invite you to go ahead and subscribe. Stick around for the next adventure. Um, with that being said, thanks for watching. Stay stoked. And I'll see you in the next one.